what this and uh, why July July yeah and then marking the bubbles there as J <laughs> bubbles okay you knocked out the Yamada there so just put the M back on oh shit yeah. uh, where, where did yeah, I that one, there. That one. M. M. okay and I guess a free swing for your letter I guess oh see the Okay, that didn't seem to fit. Try, okay. try X. Uh, this one, X. Oh, okay. Okay. Take great. Seems that all of us that came together in July are dead or mm. being killed off. So who is this X? Well, that's what we don't know. But what did I know that he didn't? I had enough for a story. An amazing story that was going to, to get you out of La Liberté. Mm. To pieces. I needed to get home fast and start typing. And away we go. Nico's apartment that evening. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. She still smells like the sand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no she showers. She hasn't anything. showered since then. <laughs> Hey, Ronnie, you cracked open the champagne yet? Are you crazy? What's wrong? Wait a minute. You didn't print it, did you? Of course I didn't print. It's the best piece I've written. The last, as far as I'm concerned. It's important. It's suicidal. Oh. You can't destroy a national hero. He deserved it. His corpse isn't even cold. Ronnie, two hours ago I told you what I found. You loved it. You begged me to write it up immediately. Two hours is a long time in this Especially when you get a hushing order. Mm. Listen up, Nicole, and listen good. The year Carchon had a lot of friends, powerful friends. For your own sake. Forget what happened. You got it. Wow. Oh. How about that? Right. What is her phone? Hmm? <laughs> Looks like a, no a snot. <laughs> the old school phone. Remember, this is the 90s. Mm. Oh, it's a nice apartment, though. Lovely apartment. Oh. Ooh. Who's that? Who else could be right now this time of night? Bonsoir, Cola. Mademoiselle Cola. Oh. My name is Plantard. I need to talk mm. to you about your story. Your Pierre Carchon oh. story. Ooh. There are people out there, madame, who will be very upset by this story. Oh, really? Well, it's their lucky day. It's been spiked. Yes, I know. We must meet. <laughs> mm. I have information relating to your oh. costume killer stories. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Cafe de la Chandelle Vert, Rue Alain Cor. I shall be wearing a grey overcoat. You must talk to no one about mm. this. You can't tell me what to... Tomorrow at 8. I'll be waiting. A.m. or p.m.? Wow. That's the quite well, a.m., obviously. People complain about newspaper articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. Was he the one that got the story spiked, maybe? This guy, Plantard. Could I trust him? Should I meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. Mm. Oh. The next morning. I'd only been in Paris for a week. But already I'd... Hey! The The original intro! The original intro I showed you, just there. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. <laughs> oh, there's Planart. Plan there's Plantard, yeah. My reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted. Oh. <laughs> it's a clown. No, it's in the costume. It's in the costume. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, balls. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. And now we're playing the original game. More or less. As I picked myself up, I was really angry. One minute I'm on vacation, the next minute some clowns blow me up. I knew right away what I was gonna do. I was gonna find that clown and bring him to justice. Because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty and equality and uh, fraternity. <laughs> That's why I studied law, wasn't it? Well, that, no, money, of course. 
<laughs> okay. So there we have it. So this is the original game now. This is where this is how it all starts. I like how your man's in the background. It's like I'm digging here. Just reviving, yeah. It's like Pure something's violent. just been exploded. Could have helped him with his digging. Could have, but right. we didn't. Okay, so there's so many things to investigate and interact with. So I'm gonna go with the nearest thing. The and table had been overturned by the explosion. Hmm. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best. You know how the audio quality has now changed yeah. since it's been re-recorded. So, oh, a newspaper. I'm gonna have a. We're gonna read the news after being blown up in an explosion. I mean, a lot of people do different things in shock, I guess. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Now this is new, actually. We don't get to see the paper in the original version. To the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Wow. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensation. Apologies. <laughs> is that meant to be like the Olsen twins or something? <laughs> it does sound look like them, doesn't it? was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Let's look at the one on the side there. Oh yeah, Saladin, yeah. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Eddin, 1345. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel mm. Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Just clear just Czechoslovakia. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnet, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. The big story was about the, okay. the guy oozed. Okay. I think I've seen everything there. Yes. Um, so there was a there was a it was a Saladin thing there anyway, yeah. five, so depending on what you interpret that to be. Go talk to this guy. Oh, a gendarme. Please. A gendarme. Oh this oh that right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. <laughs> Can't make up your mind. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> American Council. Drop your weapons Ooh, and get this. down on the ground. With that thing away, Sergeant. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. On avant, to the cafe, Mars. So. Okay. I genuinely just thought there was something down there to look at, but hopefully I get to see you what. Will. Yeah. Okay. Stop that, monsieur. <laughs> Has it occurred to you that he may be dead? Move. This has all been abridged, but um, he goes like the guy goes there. Uh, stop holding your breath at once. The guy's blown half the smithereens, like. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Now, fun fact: if you went into the cafe beforehand, this woman is here, and you can try and calm her down by offering her some drink, oh. and then you get into shit then for trying to get the woman drunk. <laughs> George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year. No? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blasts. <laughs> like, I mean, you fair. The yeah. The of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no Hmm. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? So now you can either tell the truth or not. Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? The cow! Yeah. There was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? No. Oh, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. <laughs> well, clowns and accordions, never a good mix. No, never. She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion? No doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. Really? What do you mean? <laughs> I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. Huh. Like and the don't cross the road until the little man... <laughs> <laughs> very, very important. Sound advice. I honestly believe 
You are in no danger. <laughs> you Raging here you are. Mm -hmm. Please contact me. My card. Well, is that mm -hmm. our first piece of evidence? Yes. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you <laughs> I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. So they cut off this, that part of the comedy there, but basically it goes on for a while where they say, like, they say, yeah, academic, what you're about to see is a scientific breakthrough and all this sort of stuff. Oh, okay. But in between there, there was a kind of, they were slagging off move for being a bit too comedic. And it goes like, you know, well, it could, it could be an alien. Like, like, you know, compare, like, what happens with Tintin and Poirot. And, like, the inspector there was called, like, it's different, Moo. They're comedy Belgians. <laughs> We're real detectives. Just so dismissive of the two, like, you know. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, there's a lot, they, they cut down a, a bit of that for for time's sake, and they carry, obviously, the scenes memories. a bit redundant. Yeah. Now, there wasn't anything in the cafe to actually have seen there. Okay. If you go in, if you had gone in there initially and, like, looked at Plantar, you'd see, like, he was, like, obviously blown to smithereens. There was nothing in him. On him, okay. basically. Um, and then if you spoke to the woman, she doesn't have a name or something like that. She's just a, she was happening in the back room with the bomb blast. Okay. And then she just fainted then when she came out and saw the guy bump through the rings. And that's basically, yeah. And you could have, like, helped her calm her nerves, like, give her a drink. And she might talk to you a little bit more about what happened. But otherwise, you were meant to go down that path and get okay. intercepted. So, otherwise, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's all you missed. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find this killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. Hmm. What is Russell doing with that girl? He's <laughs> giving her the world over. Uh. What Americans say. Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. So yeah, like the gas thing is like when you're leaving there, he actually does the call the temples thing, like fucking Darren Brown. Right. Like, mm. I found this in the street, Sergeant. And that Monsieur. It is kind of a joke that goes nowhere. <laughs> in fairness. No written on it. Sala Adid, thirteen forty-five. Ah ha! That stumped you, hasn't it? I have never been stumped, as you put it, in my life, Monsieur. It is the name assumed by the clown, no? Sala Adid, the clown. <laughs> I don't think so. No. Okay. Look, Sergeant, the inspector gave me his card. Yes, monsieur. He wants you to advise him if you have any information concerning this case. Well, I'd be glad to talk with him, but I don't want him working with psycho weirdness. Okay. Ah, yeah. No, monsieur. You're confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah. What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great line. Jamie, like, there are some great little tangents here. So, excuse me, Mademoiselle. Ooh, yeah. here we go. Look at the music swell off. Ah. My name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound. That's the original voice actor for Nico there. Right, okay. Here. Paris. Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off. Sure was. Sat right up in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. <laughs> yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nika Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? <laughs> I'm a the newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. So I American. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, this seems important. I found this newspaper outside the cafe. That is not a newspaper, it's a gossip rag. Ouch. There's something written in it. Is it La Liberté? Uh, <laughs> it sounds like a betting chip. The name of the horse and the time of the race. What do you think? I do think that as well, yes. but... That's what I thought. But the name of the meeting isn't given. Wait, so what? I'm not the least bit interested in horse racing, are you? No, but it could be a clue to the killer's next move. Do you think his next victim <laughs> will be the jockey? Or the horse? 
She looked at me with a playful twinkle in her eyes. <laughs> okay, the long shot. <laughs> okay. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planko. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. I like that that was like George's concerned face. Did. <laughs> Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. Oh, no. If I didn't know mm. better, I'd say it was deliberate. Oh, no. Team Rosso, is he here? And he's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. That guy is weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, weird. Look, the inspector gave me his card. I didn't know his first name was Augusta. It suits him, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> that Very was really sarcastic. Or, like, horny. <laughs> oh, his name is Augusta, no. I have plenty of time. I don't. <laughs> you can tell uh, a lot of George's lines were re, uh, re-recorded. Yeah. Especially in these kind of sections where it's mm. like... Mm. Which he's, talk- he's talking to someone from 1996. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costume killer. Planter said he could supply me with more information. Somehow the clown must have known about our appointment. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. Okay. See you again, I hope. Later, George. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, off Let's she goes. Wait until she goes off screen before I yeah, can do anything. That's it. Yeah. She off she goes. Okay. So, I can go this way. Yeah. You can. Oh, okay. So let's have a chat with this guy. The muscular workman wore a morose <laughs> expression. Hmm. Like a silent warning to leave him to get on with his job. I won't. I'm an American. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm a tourist. Do you like Bill Clinton? I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, I thought that was it. Those automatics but quite a bunch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? Not with that hair. He's only doing his duty, I guess. I do look as well that in the uh, director's cut, the kind of little like close up they have of George Orwell makes him look a lot like Dermot Morgan. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. Like in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. <laughs> I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered oh, my question. Oh, he's mentioned horses. Mm, he's mentioned clown? horses. You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Mon Dieu, he's yeah, very he's, French. He's mentioned like horses. He has. I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. 